Is it too late to save our oceans? These people don't think so. Yeah, yeah, that's good. If we do nothing, the Earth faces the next great extinction event. We can revive our ocean health. We need to give back. These are the 2023 Earthshot Prize finalists, giving Earth their best shot to revive our oceans. My name is Megan Brosnan, and I'm Wild Aid's Chief Operating Officer. Three billion people in the world depend upon the ocean for their livelihoods. There has been a global upswell in creation of marine protected areas. With that, illegal activity has increased. Up to 60% of all marine protected areas do not have effective enforcement protecting them. So that means more marine protected areas are unprotected than are protected. In that context, illegal fishing, illegal activities destroy livelihoods, destroy fish populations, which then just collapse the whole food webs. You're destroying a system that is working to our benefit for everyone, for the world. The ocean, mangroves, seagrass meadows, all of it needs protections that are actually working in order for it to thrive. Coastal waters make up 22 million square kilometers of ocean, or about 6% of, of the world's ocean. But at the same time, they contain 70% of the world's marine biodiversity. That means 83% of coral reefs, 100% of the mangroves and the seagrass are all found in coastal waters. My name is Rocky sanchez Terana. I'm based in the Philippines and I am the Global Program Lead for Fish Forever at RARE. Uh, we helped start Coastal 500. 113 million people work in small-scale fisheries. Most of these are done in coastal waters. That means that over 500 million people depend on, on coastal waters for food and livelihoods. Unfortunately, there are large issues facing coastal communities overfishing, destructive and illegal fishing happening in their waters, along with pollution and then the impacts of climate change and extreme weather. In the coastal waters, you need solutions that really work with the communities because they're the ones that are really closest to the resource and actually they're the ones that benefit most from protection and management. Traditional fishers support the livelihoods of 500 million people and the food security of billions worldwide. But also, traditional fishers world over are, are marginalized, are, are, are disenfranchised. How do we turn that on its head? I'm Serge Ramakers. I'm one of the founders and the managing director of Abalobi. I'm a fishery scientist and when I came to South Africa, I um, started looking at traditional fisheries along the coast. We can see that there are certain stocks, there are certain species that are of concern. Traditional fishers were catching these species as that's what they could earn a living from. That's what the market want. That's what they get paid for at the harbour. So there are all these incentives in the supply chain that keep stimulating overfishing. A lot of the unreported and unregulated fishing is what sustains traditional fishers, what sustains livelihoods, what sustains food security. They're trying to eke out a livelihood and just put food on the table. They're trying to survive. Healthy fisheries can, can sustain our oceans and can feed billions worldwide. But overfishing has a significant impact on the health of our ocean. But up until now, crucial ocean custodians have been left out of the conversation about conservation. It's time to act. Our oceans supply us with many of life's essential ingredients. They give us oxygen. They provide food. They create jobs all over the world. Without them, Life as we know it couldn't exist, yet we have pushed them to their limits 
and our oceans are now in real trouble. But there is still time. Oceans are extremely resilient and capable of dramatic and rapid recovery. We just need to give them a chance. So Wild Aid's blueprint for marine protection has the end goal of putting the protection back into marine protected areas. So the marine program works in developing countries with country representatives, ocean leaders, communities to help them really meaningfully protect their waters. Every marine protection system needs community engagement. Nowhere in the world are you going to have more effective observations, monitoring of your waters than a fleet of a hundred artisanal fishermen who are dedicated to protecting their waters. By working with coastal communities around the world, like parts of Ecuador, Wild Aid's marine program provides guidance, advice and tools to better guard marine protected areas by using rangers and fishers to patrol vulnerable habitats alongside other methods. Fishermen report increases in catch in places where they are partnering with us. They report decreases in illegal activity. It's their resources. And if they are engaged in the protection process, then you've now built a team, a community protecting their ocean. Coastal 500 is a global network of locally elected government leaders who have come together and pledged to support their communities in protecting their ecosystems and their fisheries. Very early on, we realized that mayors or their equivalent are really the ones that can make the difference. Um, a strong mayor can really drive change and inspire the rest of the community to follow. When a mayor joins Coastal 500, we ask them to pledge. Uh, this is a public pledge where they're really stating their commitment to community-led management, to recognizing the importance of protected areas where fish can recover, to actually enforcing rules and regulations. These communities are then supported in sharing ideas, enforcing coastal conservation policies, and advocating for coastal protection nationally and globally. Right now, Coastal 500 has over 160 members um, across eight countries. Together, these members actually influence how over 60,000 square kilometers of ocean are managed. In the work that we do, we've seen communities really step up and take charge. They have come together to agree on rules and regulations. We're starting to see that their catch is going up. We're starting to see the populations recover and the people are feeling good about the decisions that they're making. For me, what's been really powerful about Coastal 500 is really watching the power of leadership. When, when you've got a strong leader who's motivated and inspired and has his heart or her heart in the right place, so much can happen. The name of our solution is Abelobi, which means fisher in Isi Osa, and it's the name that the fishers we work with gave to the program as it became theirs. Traditional fishers have deep local ecological knowledge about our oceans. They are at the front line of our ocean emergency, but they're also at the front line of the solution. Abelobi is an opportunity for fishers to derive a legitimate livelihood from catching, from processing, from selling ecologically resilient species. Abalobi as a technology platform is all about connecting fishers with a traceability platform. Abalobi connects fishers directly to the marketplace, giving them a fair price for the fish they catch and less reason to take more fish than the ocean can provide. Every fish, the traditional fishers that are part of our program catch, gets logged in the app. Literally within an hour or two, that catch is advertised. And as a chef, as a buyer, on your app, you get a push notification and they can place their order. And that, that is a game changer. Being able to purchase directly from a traditional fisher, that's really connected these two worlds. Through our work here in South Africa, we've been able to support 
traditional fishers to move out of poverty, achieve food security within their households and their broader coastal community. And at the same time, they've been able to shift their fishery from catching a large percentage of species of concern to now catching close to 100% species that come from ecologically resilient stocks. Traditional fishers and OSHA health are so intrinsically connected and by navigating a journey with traditional fishers, we can rebuild these fisheries from a social side and an ecological side. These three solutions all aim to give our marine life the room it needs to recover. If we work together, we can revive our oceans and restore them to a healthy, thriving state. But we must act now. We are currently exerting our power to collectively destroy the oceans we have left. Let's use that power to save them instead. I hope the future is a vibrant ocean full of life and a collective of ocean leaders and people who have been empowered. Elevating their position as ocean custodians is the single most important thing we can do at scale to revive ocean health. I think coastal waters are at that perfect intersection of nature and people, and we owe it to them to, to really protect these waters. The ocean, if you give it some space, will recover incredibly quickly. With the right approaches, we can shift the needle. And huge things can happen. <laughs>